Don't miss the breakout action film of the year, Triple Threat, a high-octane action-adventure martial arts thriller. The film stars world martial arts champion Jason the Phenom Sterling as Agent Kieran Richards, who is double-crossed while trying to thwart a drug and terrorist operation. Co-stars include Andre China McCoy from The Matrix and Robert Parham from Buster Jones. Hollywood film veteran Eddie Morales from The Pit Fighter will play the leading villain. Supporting cast includes Richard Hackworth and Fred Parks from the World Martial Arts TV show. And introducing the lovely Laura Castro. The film star Jason Sterling said, Martial arts films of today are missing just that, martial arts. There will be no wire work, stunt doubles, or CGI animated characters. Everything you see will be the real thing. So don't miss it. And visit www.triplethreat.theactionmovie.info. Hi, my name is Grandmaster Gregory Glover, and I'm the Executive Director of the United States National Taekwondo Association. And this is your lesson for today. Begin in Jumbi. Turn into a left walking stance, execute a left low lock. Right front kick into a right front stance, execute a right and left middle punch. Turn into a right walking stance, execute a right low block. Left front kick into a left front stance, execute a left and right middle punch. Turn into a left walking stance, execute a right inside knife hand strike. Step into a right walking stance, execute a left inside knife hand strike. Turn into a left back stance, execute a left single knife hand block. Grab and turn into a left front stance, executing a right middle punch. Turn into a right back stance, executing a right single knife hand block. Grab and turn into a right front stance, executing a left middle punch. Turn into a left walking stance, executing a right inside block. Step into a right walking stance, executing a left inside block. Turn 270 degrees into a left walking stance, executing a left low block. Right front kick into a right front stance, executing a right and left middle punch. Turn into a right walking stance, executing a right low block. Left front kick into a left front stance, execute a left and right middle punch. Turn into a left walking stance, left low block, right middle punch. Step into a right walking stance, right low block, left middle punch. Left front kick into a left walking stance, left low block, right middle punch. Right front kick into a right walking stance, right low block, into a left middle punch and key up. Return to Barrow. Begin in Chumbi. Turn into a left walking stance, execute a left low block. Right front kick, landing in a right front stance, execute a right and left middle punches. Turn into a right walking stance, execute a right low block. Left front kick, landing in a left front stance, execute left and right middle punches. Turn into a left walking stance, execute a right inside knife hand strike. Step into a right walking stance, execute a left inside knife hand strike. Turn into a left back stance, execute a left single knife hand block. Grab, turn into a left front stance, execute a right middle punch. Turn into a right back stance, execute a right single knife hand block. Grab and turn into a right front stance, execute a left middle punch. Turn into a left walking stance, execute a right inside block. Step into a right walking stance, execute a left inside block. Turn 270 degrees into a left walking stance, execute a left low block. Right front kick, landing into a right front stance, execute a right and left middle punch. Turn into a right walking stance, execute a right low block. Left front kick, landing in a left front stance, execute a left and right middle punch. Turn into a left walking stance, execute a left low block and right middle punch. Step into a right walking stance, execute a right low block and left middle punch. Left front kick into a left low block and right middle punch. 
Right front kick into a right low block, left middle punch, and key up. Return to bar up. Taekwondo Training, Fellowship and Spirit. The U.S. National Taekwondo Association is your link to the traditional Taekwondo of Korea. We offer both national and world certifications. Our mission is to provide a fraternal organization for the promotion and preservation of Taekwondo as a martial art. We strive to service all needs of the traditional stylist from the highest level grandmaster to the beginner student. Enjoy the many benefits we offer. Grade and black belt certifications, instructor and master instructor courses, tournament insurance, success seminars, state, national, and international competitions, business support, martial arts supplies, monthly e-newsletter, and private training tours of Korea. Not only do we teach the best techniques, but Korean philosophy as well. We develop the complete mind, body, and spirit philosophy. Visit www.usnta.net to join today. Next, we have Dr. Ronald Stone with your Hapkido Lesson of the Week, sponsored by HeimuKwan.com. And you'll see, now remember, when all of these techniques were designed centuries ago, 1300s, a Chinese military academy, they were to teach troops how to fight. Every single individual movement had to be important. Because you're in a battle like Braveheart with thousands of people swinging clubs and knives or whatever. You don't want to be wasting time coming from here just so it looks good. So when we do these techniques, it does have to be fast, but we don't want to be wasting movements. So strike, he drops his knife. Boom, you hit it and lowers his head. Three, you come in. But back in the 1300s, they didn't have videos. Obviously, they didn't even have flip books. So a lot of times you had, you know, bamboo drawing or drawings uh, with the papyrus or whatever it was they used back then. And they were stick figures. So when you saw a stick figure here, and you saw a stick figure here, they weren't meant to be standing still. 
I got into the martial arts because somebody taught me this overhand block and the guy, the first time I tried it, knocked me to the ground and knocked me unconscious because nobody told me you're not supposed to stand there with power. You're supposed to move once you've caught the weapon. So that's the difference between learning a martial art correctly and learning a self-defense class for a week and a half. I got an A at the class at the University of Illinois, but it didn't help me much when he knocked me out. So again, pressure point, strike, pressure point, strike, knockout blow. And that is the easiest way to understand how we use those individual pressure points. If someone grabs me here, all right, a lot of times you're taught these sort of wide, grab on, hold on tight. Okay, we're not in time. So you're taught these sort of, you know, blows, and hit in here, whatever. You don't have to if you understand pressure point usage. Now, we don't just utilize a single individual pressure point. Why? Because his pressure points and his pressure points and mine are different. They may be an inch apart, and sometimes they're numb. Maybe he's in a particular activity where he gets hit there a lot and it's a numb point. But one thing that we always do is we do a neural stun of some sort, whether it be a slap to the ear, whether it be a, a shin kick. Well, I use this, I think this is one of the most important self-defense techniques there is. Our kick is either to break the shin, make it hurt enough, or you can actually use it to the pressure point right on the inside of the knee. You can just push on the right on the inside of your lower right below your knee. You'll feel it on yourself, right? You give someone a good bop there, and he's going to do exactly that. So he grabs you here. Now I'm not, he, I, you know, I'm not going to try and muscle him over, especially if he's bigger than I. And this is very common for people bigger. You know, tattoo is not going to be doing this technique. Uh, you know, this is something that somebody strong and big is going to do. So if I try to fight him, I'm going to lose. And in Hapkido, it's not about muscle over muscle. It's about non-resistance, the water principle, the circle principle, and the sun principle. So what we do is pain compliance, a little neural stun. And then I just squeeze those pressure points here. And now, from here, if I want to be generous, I can just push him to the ground. If I don't, I can knee him. I can get real brutal with it. But the point is, I'm escaping from this grab before he has time to headbutt me. Right before he has time to pull me in and headbutt me, headbutt, boom, right? So all I do is take his mind off his head. He's now worried about whether his shin's broken or not. Now I just simply pressure point him down. I can then push and go away, or I can get in and get angry. That's how we use pressure point technology. The point of this pressure point study is this is all relating to key energy. And so in order to use this, we have to understand that there are certain pressure points and energy meridians. There's about 32 of them that we have to worry about. One that, that, that we all seem to learn sort of instinctively right off the bat is the meridian of energy that goes down that these points are located on. And if we turn this arm over, okay, we turn wood over metal, that's reversing this, this, this meridian, there's some compliance that I can have with this. But if I reverse it the other way, right, now it's really significantly much more powerful. Again, think of it as an electric wire with a bunch of Christmas lights on there. We're trying to interrupt those points so that we can make his body less effective. Obviously, if I, if I hit him there, he's now down there worrying about his strong grip, his power, his force, his energy his breathing. If I take his mind off of it and then apply pressure, right, he's not thinking in terms of attacking me, right? If he's, if he, if, if I've got a hand coming at me, right, he, I don't have, I hear this a lot. Well, you know, that really won't work because he's got two hands. And there was an article that was written many years ago that influenced me a lot called The Myth of the One-Arm Warrior. And the, the myth of the one-arm warrior is we always practice right hand, then left hand, and sometimes they come at you with both hands. So one of the things that I like to do is make sure that when I reverse his meridians, I try to reverse to the outside. If I can't reverse to the outside, I want him so pain compliant, he forgets about that arm. So yeah, you can use the other hand to clock me, but they don't know what I'm going to do. When he attacks me, he's thinking knock my block off and maybe knock my block off twice, but he doesn't know whether I'm going to go to the inside or the outside or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interfere with his thought process. And there's lots of ways we see this done. 
But what I'm trying to tell everybody is that the importance of pressure point and key usage is that a blunt row, right, is not as effective as interrupting someone's key, applying or manipulating, again, manipulating his key energy. So why? Would you think about it? Would you rather that get a punch to the eye or would you rather I stuck my thumb or my forefinger right through that eyeball? Individual point versus raw brute force. Sorry, let me just hit you. Okay, same thing with these pressure points in here. I can club them, but if I accentuate them first and then hit them, that's when your short circuit occurs. So when we come back, we're going to be talking then about actual ways to manipulate, and not just different individual techniques, but ways and philosophies and theories of interrupting and manipulating your opponent's key energy to your benefit. Thank you. We have a special treat today, a sword lesson with Professor Michael McGann. Okay, the first sword kata I'm going to show you is from a standing position. What I'm going to do here is get into this position with the hand here. The first warning I give to my opponent not to attack me is pushing up on the suba with my thumb, releasing the blade. As I grab a hold of the katana, I'm going to shift forward, cutting. Okay, decapitating him, bring the katana over the head, chibiri blood flick, and then noto receiving it back from here. Okay, now my sensei always taught that if you really know a kata, that you're able to do it blindfolded. So I want you to take the hakimachi here and see if you can look through it. Is, uh, okay, now I want you to go ahead and tie it tight on me. Okay, now I'm going to turn and face the camera, okay, from this position here, okay, here, cut, again, one more time, okay, that was kata number one. The second kata that I'm going to demonstrate is from an opponent walking up towards me. And so that kata, let me go ahead from here. And I'm going to go ahead and keep the uh, katana on the side as I demonstrate the katas to you. Okay, obviously the first one was a head decapitation kata. The second kata, if the person is coming up with a sword, what I'm going to do from here is step forward with the right, bring it from here, out here. As I step forward, I'm going to do a diagonal cut. I'm going to release the seiya. Okay, step back. And I'm going to come down, case of giri, diagonal cut, back up to here, chiviri, and then no toe. The next kata is from attack to the right, okay? But I want you to stay here so you can see, okay? okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do four things simultaneously. I'm going to step out here. I'm going to turn the, uh, 
got it stuck in the a comma. Okay, I'm going to turn it from here. I'm going to look over here and grab. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, all simultaneous. Okay, so from here, I'm going to cut and then come downward with the cut, face back, chibiri, and then no toe. So my first movement is I'm stepping here, looking at my opponent. I'm going to do a horizontal cut, step forward, downward cut, step back, chibiri, and no toe. The next kata is from attack to the left. I'm going from here, same time that I step out, I'm going to move the thumb from here, grab the katana, look in that direction, thrust, pull back, case of Gary, diagonal cut, back here, chibiri, and then a different form of no toe, receiving the blade back here. The next attack is from a person behind me and then in front. The person behind me is attacking first. So what I'm going to do is I bring up over here, turn, cut, bring back over here, diagonal cut, chibiri, and then no toe. Again, I'm going to bring, the, say upward, as I turn around and bring it over shoulder, diagonal cut, bring back over here, diagonal cut, Chibiri, and then no toe. The next is from four different opponents attacking. One from the right, one from the left, one behind me, and one in front. So the first thing I do is drop into a kibidachi cut here, cross T stance here, downward cut here, downward cut here, Chibiri, and then no toe. The next kata is from the ninjutsu style, nindoru to be exact. When the opponent, I'm going to turn the whole sword upside down and he's close enough that I'm going to wind up preventing him from drawing his sword. I'm going to pull it all the way out to the seiya, cut to his groin, bring it over the shoulder, thrust to his throat. Now our chibiri is different. From here, the blood flicked off. From here, then we Reshiv the sword from here. The next kata is a person's coming down with a downward cut very quickly. So again, I'm going to bring up here and block his sword, roll it off, thrust, chibiri, then no toe. And the last kata from here it is a very fast draw and cut kata. From here, I'm going to stand in this position here, thrust, flip it back over, knock the blood off, shibiri, and then resheath. And that, from here, sir, is the first movement of the live blade kata. Back from here, courtesy ba. Courtesy ba. World Martial Arts Magazine columnist and martial arts weapons expert, Master Darren Norris, is coming to World Martial Arts TV. Tune in each episode as he teaches us the finer points of using various Hapkido weapons. Be sure to visit his website, www.masterdarrennorris.com. And remember to like him on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash Master Darren Norris. So, uh, our next segment that we're going to go through is uses for the belt. And uh, even though we're using our martial arts belt, uh, remember that these, most of these techniques can be done with the belt that holds up. Pants. I saw a really cool lady for about one season they had this FBI show where a lady was the an investigator. The very first episode, she's chasing a guy. All of a sudden she goes into a blind alley and she can't see him. Well, he had gotten behind something, he got behind her, he was going to choke her. She immediately undoes her belt, rips it out, throws it over his head, and does a beautiful throw. And I'm like, whoa, I gotta watch this shit. 
well, the whole rest of the students can do it, you know, like that. But belt techniques are very useful. Your belt can come in handy. I personally wear the Sam Brown belt, the heavy canvas belt with the buckle that just, those make an excellent striking but That buckle is very intimidating when you're swinging it in somebody's face. Okay. So the first thing that I'll cover is even though this is a belt, it's still a striking tool. Okay? Anything, it's an A-weather. Thank, thank you, it's an A-weather. This might be a lower belt, but at the face, it's kind of intimidating. You start around, even though if you hit them, it's not going to cause any damage, they will still start backing out of the way. So first and foremost, our first it is a striking weapon. Secondly, it is a very good blocking weapon. Your belt's very useful against someone with a knife. You're trying to stay away from that lady who uses the belt. Instead, Melissa, thank you for volunteering. So if I have my belt and she strikes, I can use the belt to deflect the strike. Here, side outside, down, up. All of these open areas. Sometimes you can open an area and then use the belt to all balance your opponent. This way. I can move your body in the belt. So the belt can be used in many ways other than just wrapping it around something. So don't forget that when you're training with the belt. Learn to use it as a blocking, striking weapon. And remember, as we've already covered today, every block is a strike. Every strike is a block. Okay? So just get with a partner, have them throw some punches. One twos, one two threes, kicks, learn to use the belt to deflect those strikes and all balance your opponent. Hey. <coughs> so let's let's move on to some things that you can do with the belt. Okay? You, first thing I want to talk about is being able to throw someone with you. Okay, so that same punch comes. Awesome. 
arms at the end. tries to reach up and hit me with his other arm, now I can just wrap it too. And I'll do it. And so like any time, so 